So as I mentioned earlier, neutrophils are kind of the number one leukocyte in dogs, cats, and horses, and a few other species that we don't really talk about. Again, the corollary in avian and reptiles is the heterophil. Guinea pigs, we call it a heterophil or pseudoeosinophil, similar to rabbits. And so the schematic, kind of unattractive schematic, is similar, although it's uh, kind of turned from the one in your notes. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about neutrophil production uh, so you understand when we talk about what we actually see in peripheral blood when it comes to neutrophils. So kind of similar to the red cell, we start off as, you know, this kind of early uh, stem cell of sorts. And then from that stage all the way to a mature neutrophil takes around five days. So that's around five days from stimulation to actual release of a mature neutrophil. I'll tell you a little bit about types and then we'll kind of go through where neutrophils live. So this is our segmented neutrophil and it has nice tight segments of the chromatin. It's been very condensed. Um, and one before that, which you may have tried to recognize in class, are band neutrophils. And those are horseshoe-shaped neutrophils nuclei. And one before that is something called a metamyelocyte. And for the most part, these are the three cell types that you may see in peripheral blood more commonly. We rarely see what's called the myelocyte. And again, this is immature up here. And then maturity goes this way. So segmented neutrophils are who we expect to see, but if you see anything before that, then that is immature cells that are being released, and that is called a left shift, and that's due to inflammation, almost always. These earlier forms, uh, this is something called a promyelocyte, and this is a myeloblast, and we really don't characterize those very much. And again, this is bone marrow production, and we're going to talk a little bit about the different pools of bone marrows, both in, um, excuse me, the different pools of neutrophils, both in bone marrow, blood, and then tissue. So in the bone marrow, we have kind of two primary pools. They're not necessarily physically separated, uh, and these are two pools of neutrophils in the various precursors. And I call these the proliferation pool, which is also I call the factory, and then the maturation pool, which is called the warehouse. And the maturation pool also has a subset within it, and I'll tell you about that. So the proliferation pool contains cells that can still divide, right? So this is going to be the earliest neutrophil precursors and their stem cell. So I've kind of blocked off the proliferation pool, pool and this is the factory again, and these guys can divide. Um, and then the maturation pool or the warehouse. And these are the ones that can no longer divide. Uh, and within the maturation pool, we have what's called the storage pool. And this is a subset of this maturation pool and it contains mature neutrophils. So this is that part of it. And so this is the storage pool. And why this is relevant is uh, when we actually have need or neutrophils that are being released into blood. So these guys are essentially just waiting to be called out into peripheral blood. And that's the part that they're released from, the storage pool. And it's, respon and it's in response to kind of normal neutrophil aging out in the periphery. And we'll talk about more of this. It's also, so it'll be released normally. It can be released due to inflammation and then something called stress. Um, so when we talk about a storage pool and the size, uh, most animals kind of have the similar, so dogs, cats, and horses all have a similarly sized storage pool, where cows and cattle, they have a small neutrophil storage pool. So that's what we're going to talk about as far as when we get to ruminant. So let's talk about blood storage pools, or excuse me, blood numbers of neutrophils next. So when we talk about blood neutrophils, we talk about circulating neutrophils, and then we talk about marginal neutrophils, and I'm going to tell you what that is now. So circulating neutrophils are the one that are actually sort of within the main part of the vessel. And so when you actually draw blood, right, so here comes a needle coming in, you are sampling the central part of the flowing blood, and you will sample circulating neutrophils. Whereas marginal neutrophils are on the wall of the vessel, 
and they are not sampled. And the reason they're on the wall is because this is how neutrophils get around and get to tissues, because of course that's their point, is they roll along. So they roll along the vessel wall, uh, and that's due to various selectins, integrins, um, allowing for adhesion and then transmigration to actually get into tissue. And so they go from the circulating pool uh, and they go to the marginal pool and then they can go from the marginal pool back into the circulating pool or from the marginal pool they can go into tissue both for inflammatory reasons and just normally that's where they go when they um, leave the vessels. And so if it takes five days for a bone, or excuse me, a neutrophil to mature in the bone marrow, it's in circulation around 10 to 12 hours, which is not a lot of time. And then when it's in tissue, uh, it stays in tissue for around one to two days, depending on the inflammation. But the real number to remember is 10 to 12 hours. They have a very short lifespan in circulation. And I'm going to go into the different types of neutrophilia in more detail. Um, but just to give you kind of an overview right now, there's three types. The first one, which we see commonly in sick animals, is a stress, um, stress neutrophilia, and it's mediated by cortisol. And classically, it's going to be relatively mild, so less than two times the upper reference limit for our neutrophils. There's going to be no left shift, so no bands. And the characteristic feature is going to be a lymphopenia. So that's characteristic of a stress leukogram. The next, which we've talked about a little bit, is a physiologic neutrophilia. And that's mediated by epinephrine. And classic is going to be a mild neutrophilia. And that's mild in terms of most animals. Cats can actually have a greater. Uh, there's going to be no left shift, so no bands. But in this one, you're going to expect a lymphocytosis most commonly. And other things you might see is that increase in PCV and your increase in platelets due to splenic contraction. And the last neutrophilia, the most important neutrophilia to recognize, is inflammatory or inflammation. And this actually has a lot of different ways of characterizing it, but I'm going to give you kind of some general things. So the degree can be mild to marked. So anything greater than two times the upper reference limit proves it, but it can be less than. You can have a left shift or not, so you can have bands or less mature forms. Lymphocytes can be low if there's stress. It can be normal or they can be increased in chronic inflammation. You can also see increases in monocytes. And the neutrophils themselves can have something called toxic change. And so we'll talk about all of these different things.